I'll take everyone I can get right now, right? Just because it does feel like we're supposed to be in a position where the window is opening. And at that point, I'm willing to accept luck. Um, I'm also a realist here. They kicked our ass for three quarters. Okay. And so, listen, it's nice for Caleb to be able to make some clutch drives at the end. Um, however, it's it's kind of like a double-edged sword because now this thought exists in the back of these guys' heads where we could go in there, put in all our effort, and this thing's still going – we'll still mess it up. You know what I mean? Whereas, like, if you do win that game, then, then it kind of just, like, it reinforces that positivity of, hey, put in every ounce of energy you have into this because it's all possible. But instead, that's what the, the uh, commanders got right? They're now moving forward with the idea that this team will fight to the end, no matter what, because look what we just did, right? So it, 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 you know, a lot of people are like, can you bounce back from this, this and that, you know, um, we've had, we've been going on the fire Matt Eberflus thing for like over a year now. So from my opinion, he's a good defensive coordinator. I always tend to credit the players more than I do the coaches, right? Um, not saying that the coaches don't have impact or, or affect it. They do a lot, but I tend to just give more credit to the players. And so I, I don't think that you can't, I don't think that like Eberflus is irreplaceable. I think there's other guys that could come in here and get production out of this defensive talent that you have on the field. Um, he just seems very average to me. And so when it comes to a couple plays a game, when it comes to getting a challenge, when it comes to doing the right thing, I think, find that you're going to be on the wrong side of that more often than you are on the right side of that. So um, I've said, Hey, there's an upgrade here to be made. He's not terrible. Right. But he's not great. And I'm not willing to crown him. And I guess his best quality is not letting the ship sink all the way to the bottom. Last year, after that Detroit collapse, I said, this team will not play as hard for this man again. And then the next week against the Vikings, they did. They went out and got four turnovers again, and they continued to sit there. And so I said I was wrong, okay? So maybe he does have, you know, maybe he's good enough for these guys to believe, fight for him, this and that. Great, but, like, how many times are you going to do this with this kind of epic collapse before you give up? And I found it very interesting that these players were speaking up, and now all of a sudden, I don't know if you guys heard quotes recently, it's, oh, well, we need to keep things in-house. We need to keep things in-house. I think, personally, and this is just speculation here, I don't know anything, I'm not reporting anything, I don't have any insight, it's just my brain working. I think they're upset. They can't yell back at the media, Right, he's saying, I appreciate your questions. I appreciate your questions. Goes behind closed doors to the locker room, goes, What the hell, guys? You're helping throw me under the bus here. Quit it, stop it. And instead, he's taking his frustrations out on the players instead of owning it himself. Like he should, he should be the spearhead for this team. It should start with him, just like the quarterback. He that they're on the same level. They go out there and say, Hey, it's us, it's us, and then whatever. You know what I mean? And Iberflus just refuses to do that. And so I think that's going to really bite him in the ass in the long run. So Iberflus did take accountability um, yesterday on Wednesday. T- took long enough. And to your point regarding the players, it was both DJ Moore and um, the safety, Kevin Byard. They both had essentially threw him under the bus. So your point, very well received, and it's true. Yeah, I felt like he did it to get the monkey off his back. Okay, fine. It's my fault. Let's move on. We got another game. Yeah, like you, you didn't, PR training you didn't is, own yeah. it. You own it right in the moment when it's I'm the hardest. Here. When it's the hardest time to do so, you show that you're a damn leader, and you go up there right after the damn game. You know what I mean? And you own it because you're you're the head coach. So when you look around the league, you got a guy like Doug Peterson, who won a Super Bowl in a, you know in his three years later is fired from the Eagles, right? Three years like Nick Foles got. Super Bowl MVP that year, his backup quarterback. So despite even losing your quarterback and being a v- very average coach, I think Iberflus is a better coach than Doug Peterson, right? He still has that Super Bowl on his resume. Whereas, like, you look at a guy like Andy Reid, it took him 20 years 
before he finally won a Super Bowl. And that's where at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, the players are the ones that have to get it done for you. It wasn't until you got Patrick Mahomes, but everybody knew you were a great coach. You know what I mean? It's just those things don't always go hand in hand. And so is it possible for Matt Eberflus to win with this team? Sure, of course. And I think that that's what the hope was that we were going to ride on, that we're going to have players that are talented enough to overcome having an average coach. You know what I mean? However, you know, that's coming to fruition a little bit. You saw Caleb Poli Eberflus off the field. It's stuff like that, you know what I mean, where it's like, man, that shouldn't be – after leading a fourth-quarter comeback – sitting down on the bench with 25 seconds to go, not expecting to play another play unless you go in overtime, right? Sit down, take a breath. What's the first thing you do? You have to go get your coach, pull him off the field from getting a penalty. Like that shouldn't be your concern at that point if you're Caleb, but he's still, you know, his awareness is still there. So um, I think that's a positive sign. But like I said, I'm not just going to sit here and pretend that there isn't an upgrade available at the head coaching position. And I'm a cutthroat guy. I think this is a cutthroat league and I'm willing to make tough decisions sometimes in order to make clear, obvious upgrades. And if Ben Johnson was available out there, I don't know how you didn't pull the trigger. I don't know. Who's a clear cut, obvious head coach that you'd want to go out and get to replace Iberflus? Like last off season or this upcoming season? Going into this upcoming season because we can't go back into the past, unfortunately. So you can't answer that honestly because you don't know who's available yet. Um, last year, like so, I would have, I, I don't think Jim Harbaugh is the perfect coach. I would have taken him. Yeah, I would have. Yeah, I think I, that's I, an upgrade. I would over have, I would have for sure taken Jim Harbaugh. He brings a better staff with him. You know what I mean? And so at least you're experienced enough in this league to have connections. Like let's not forget in in San Francisco. Harbaugh had Vic Fangio under him. You know what I mean? So, like, this, that's part of the deal here, whereas we uh, don't have that with Heberflus. He's an up-and-coming guy. So anybody who he gets is also up-and-coming. Like, Lou Getze was not an offensive coordinator. You know what I mean? You have to give these guys new opportunities. So it's like, uh, on one hand, I would like a guy with some experience. Man, if you could pull out – if you could – yeah, I would say Brian Dable is probably a better head coach over Flus. No. He's just in a no. bad he, he's situation fat, over there. Yeah, I guess. But, I mean, they're really handicapped by their quarterback. It, it's the decision to keep Daniel Jones that really screwed him. I don't understand John's <laughs> comment, though. He said you could have had Brian Dable and Cliff Kingsbury. I think Cliff Kingsbury, if he's going to leave the Redskins, it's going to be a head coach. I do not want Cliff Kingsbury as a head coach. No, but I and wanted him as an offensive coordinator, and I felt the Bears that, were too That's afraid. debatable. I felt the in the Bears long run, I think it's going to hurt the quarterback. I felt the Bears were too afraid to make that move because if you have a guy with head coaching experience as your offensive coordinator and this happens, too, my what's brother. happening now, then everybody's calling for Eberflus to step down and Kingsbury to take over. Whereas right now, we can't do that because there's nobody to take over. You're forced to ride it out with Eberflus. And I think that's more of a situation that they preferred. I choose to, you know back off of the week to week thing and kind of take a look at the bigger picture. And so sure, Greg Gabriel said what he said and sure the stats are and the records are whatever you can, you could sit there and pick apart any argument like that period. Okay. The chargers, they're not in a strong division. They're in the AFC. I mean, I, I could list you multiple teams. They, that are their than, losses but, are very, very legitimate. And anyone who's saying that the Cardinals are a bad sure. team, we're going to see that. What we'll, I'm we'll figure saying, that out though, real soon. What I'm saying, though, is in the big picture, I trust Harbaugh way more than I trust Eberflus, period. You know what I mean? And it's not about this week. Like, you ask me what I think is going to happen next week. I think we'll win. I think we'll win against the Patriots. We'll be feeling all giggly for the next two weeks. And then reality is going to sink in when we face some damn tough teams from this division. And it's time to perform and time to act again. And in the long run, I think you'll see these failures repeat. Listen, guys, you saw the statistic come out of all these probabilities and what the chances are of it happening four times, right? It's one in a million. We got a one in a million head coach, guys. F Foster, before I answer your question, PJ, I just want to kind of answer some of your points a little bit because I feel like, you know, you're saying two different things at times. And it's like, okay, so one, we have to go through the growing pains with Caleb Williams, of course. You're also saying that Matt Eberflus is learning on the job. So we also have to go through his growing pains at the same time. 
in in after he's been a head coach multiple years now and had time to figure this out. So that's okay. Then you're saying there is a chance to still get a lot of wins. Yes, 100%. I think your idea of what that chance is and my idea uh, differ a little bit. You're probably a little bit higher with that percentage of a chance. I think I'm a little bit lower, but there's always a chance that you could still turn this thing around and, you know, overcome average coaching. Right. And then you're going off and pointing out the improvements that the coaching could have had. And so, you know, you're saying don't fire. I'm not on the whole don't uh, fire everybody and this and that. Like you're in a situation where you're not going to fire Eberflus right now. Who's going to replace him? You got nobody better. Right. So you're you're handicapped into riding this thing out to the end of the year one way or another whether it's good or bad or whatever bears won't fire head coaches during the middle of the season you're riding this thing out with matt eberflus right like this is his last shot it's do or die go ahead but then we're noticing all these faults that you're making that like you said can he get better sure how long how much longer is it going to take him to get better i don't know and i don't i don't really want to find out so in my opinion i would much rather get a guy in here who is better who has that stuff figured out who won't like a head coach who will make less of those errors that he's making right now and so like i said i'm just i'm not saying that matt eberflus is the worst guy out there or whatever but i'm I'm also not saying that he's the greatest and he's irreplaceable Mm -hmm. i think that there is definitely candidates out there that could come in here with a staff still get production out of these players and you know, when it comes to what they're responsible for, make less errors and do a better job. Of course, there's worse ones out there, too, and we've all seen that, but I'm willing to take that risk and try and pair that up with Caleb Williams than I think to keep this thing going after this year, right? In fact, I was I was all for it at the beginning. Like, in the offseason, I kind of wanted to do this. I'd rather be a step ahead than a step behind. Um, and then Foster, was there growth? I mean, y- yes. And 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 no, I mean it's it kind of sh- it kind of sucks. Is there growth? I think there's growth. I think there's growth every game, especially for a rookie quarterback that's only played so many games. And so you're going to go through your ups and downs. You're going to have your bad games. To sit here and see him overcome all that and still show up in the clutch moments is very good. I have very little concern about Caleb Williams moving forward. Um, however, I wish it was reinforced reinforced with the victory reinforced with the prize instead of reinforced with failure that's where i feel like i, I don't know like it, that kind of sucks you know what i mean but the prize yeah, I think is playoff paul the, the, the prize is, is the trophy foster um <laughs> romeo dobbs on the packers did not specify why he missed a practice and it led to a, a, him getting suspended jair alexander he on did the packers, specify why it, that's what led to a suspension. Jair Alexander for uh, for his pregame toss antics got suspended. The Patriots suspended Malcolm Butler for the Super Bowl. Why? Because because the team's bigger than you, man. Vernon Davis is all I have to say. Vernon Davis. I don't want him. We can't we can't win with him. You guys remember Mike Singletary? It, Vernon Davis, he, he said that changed him around. He said it changed his whole life around that benching. Okay. And so it 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 has to happen. I like Tyreek as much as everybody else likes Tyreek. Uh, Foster, you said, like, do you hurt the whole team? I mean, I, I, it's it might just be necessary. It's just, it's part of the deal. I'm not trying to have him be like Gomer Pyle from Fulman jacket i don't want these guys beating him with soap in the middle of the night because they have to suffer for him but i don't think that's it i think what it is is setting expectations setting a tone for what is acceptable and what isn't and that's just not acceptable and it won't be repeated by you or anybody else on this team without consequences period first time around and so in my opinion it sucks it sucks that he did it, it you gotta you gotta do it man it, it's it's hard you got to do it. 